Good morning, hockey fans. This is Stephen Heisler with HighsHockey.com, the Junior Hockey Discussion Group on Facebook, and the Victorious Hockey Company. This is the Junior Hockey Morning Show. Today is Tuesday, March 21st, 2023. We are on the World Sports Broadcasting Network, WSBN.TV. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, your living room, your car, your office on your phone, on your laptop, on your iPad, wherever you're watching or listening to us this morning from. A lot to go over today. The field is set and ready to go for the 2023 NA3 HL Fraser Cup Championships, which will take place from March 22nd tomorrow to the 26th at the St. Peter's Rec Plus in St. Peter's, Missouri. Six teams have advanced to the season-ending event, which annually crowns the NA3HL National Playoff Champion. Pool A, top seed Alexandria Blizzard from the West. Four seed Texas Brahmas. Six seed Granite City Lumberjacks is the wild card. In Pool B, we have the second seed Oregon Tradesmen from the Central. The Helena Bighorns from the Frontier and Northeast Generals from the East. Games start tomorrow. Alexandria versus the Brahmas. And then the, uh, hold on a second here. Somebody made, yeah. Versus the Brahmas and Oregon Tradesmen and Helena at 7 p.m. Coffee time. This coffee break sponsored by the Bastella Coffee Company. And the North American Hockey League. Bostello, you guys got to try that stuff. It'll wake up the dead. North American Hockey League's East Division has the clearest playoff pitcher in the league with five to ten games remaining for each team. It looks like the division-leading Black Bears are back from their nap, while the Titans, Nordiques, and Generals appear to be well on their way to join Maryland in the playoffs. Maine has wins in 9 of 10 games after a difficult road sweep at Danbury. Started out with the top. Number one, Maryland Black Bears, 36-14-4-0, 76 points, 11-point lead over New Jersey. Clint Mylock's Bears looked dialed in while completely snuffing Johnstown in three straight games, punching their playoff ticket in the process. I think it's fair to say the rest, the result was the best three games of the season for Maryland. And it's something we haven't seen Maryland do for a long time is play three straight games in a series and be consistent in all three. I'm sure Clint Mylock this week is smiling in practice. Look for the straight to stretch of six games when they could, if they could maintain that same intensity when the Generals come to town this weekend. And that will be important for Maryland to do well against the Generals because that can likely be the team they face in the first round of the playoffs. So showing some mastery and domination in that series would be epic for them and sends a message back to the Generals that, hey, you may come to the dance, but uh, you're going to get your butt kicked in the process. Number two, New Jersey Titans, 31, 17, 1 and 2, 65 points. Messed that up somehow. What did Craig Dermis Titans do after Friday's shutout road win over the Generals? Whatever it was, let's hope they don't try that trick again this week when they visit Maine. New Jersey tossed a dud in Saturday's 3 0 shutout loss. There's something about going to Boston that oftentimes causes some havoc for teams. They go in there and win on Friday. I don't know if they're going to the bar, heading down to the Boston downtown area, having a good time, seeing the sights, whatever it is. It's usually resulting in a negative game, the second game. Teams that stay focused while visiting the Generals manage to stay on the win column, but if they get distracted, watch out. Maine Nordiques, 31-17, 2-1. Pinch and the Nordiques should have known better 
and known that Dan Bray was going to do more than just break a sweat after getting that win over the Generals last week. So why did the Norwich have to dig out a gritty 2-1 road win on Friday? Maine was down 2-1 to one going into the, third, uh, into the third period of Saturday's game before lighting the lap. Lighten the lamp three times to get the 4 2 win. Yikes. New Jersey visits the Coliseum this weekend. Number four, Northeast Generals, 28 24 and 1. It's going to take a catastrophic meltdown for Brian Erickson's Generals to not make the playoffs. The weekend home split with the Titans may have not done much to move the needle, but combined with Johnstown's failure. Failure to secure, secure any points in three games, it certainly helps. Generals visit Maryland this week. You know, it's going to be interesting, the series at Maryland, and the Generals got to look at that like a playoff preview. Hey, we have to go here and do something in the first round if we don't move our positioning a little bit. And Maryland's playing really good hockey right now. So what kind of mindset do the Generals have going into that series this weekend? Well, whatever happens in that series is going to have an effect on the playoff series as well. The mental game is every bit as important what's happening on the ice. Number five, Johnstown Tomahawks, 23-23-3-1. Things are not looking good for Mike Letizia's Tomahawks. Johnstown was unable to secure any points from the three-game series at Division Leading Maryland. With just two wins in the last 10 games, It's evident that the Tomahawks are circling the drain with just 10 games remaining. Philadelphia is in town for three games this weekend. Will the real Tomahawks show up? They generally show up for one of the games at the War Memorial. Can they do it in three games this weekend? Is it going to be two good games and one bad game? Is it going to be one bad good game and two bad games? So just depends on what Tomahawks team Hits the ice there this weekend. Philadelphia will be ready. They're playing good hockey right now. They beat Jersey two straight games. Um, I like to see something happen there. But Johnstown doesn't look particularly strong right now. And Philadelphia looks like a team that can do something. Just speaking of the Rebels, 23-25, one and one Justin Hale and the Rebels got the weekend off before we're heading up to Johnstown for a three-game set this weekend. If the Rebels are serious about playoff possibilities, this is an opportunity to secure six huge points. Look at Philadelphia. Look at Johnstown. They're heading in two different directions. It looks like Philadelphia can overtake Johnstown and possibly even start to chip away at the Generals' lead a little bit especially after this weekend. If Philadelphia is able to secure six points and Generals don't get any points, watch out. The Rebs can be on the move. One team not on the move, well, Danbury had tricks. Patrick Steffen has reset the tricksters in, with a pile of youngsters and is getting better games as a result. Danbury made it very clear to the visiting Nordiques that pulling points from a two-game home series was not going to be a cakewalk, and it was not. Maine edged Danbury 2-1 to one Friday before doubling up the tricks 4-2 on Saturday. Danbury has this weekend off, and they visit Jersey on Tuesday. Let's talk about the expansion, sisters. I don't know why I call them that, but, you know, it's not nice. Maybe I should change that. What do you think? Maybe I should. Sisters might get offended by that. Rochester Junior Americans, what are you guys doing? I'm hearing that Americans head coach and general manager, Francis Method, I'm sure I'm messing that name up, is already in a bit of a power struggle with scouting consultant Chris, Chris Collins. Just how many tenders have been promised to evolve sports group clients? Has anybody seen Barry Soskin in Rochester? That's all I'm going to say about that. Or is it? New Hampshire Mountain Kings. Love the name. They may not be Kings owner Chris Brown's favorite for mentioning his involvement last week before the official announcement came out. That's okay. 
I'm already thinking the Mountain Kings are going to be the best of the three. Is there only three expansion teams joining the league for next season? Poor guys getting co- calls about coaching jobs from all over the world. Chris, be smarter than the other fools. Find a coach with some NHL experience. Maybe he's a longtime assistant, a general manager, or something. Don't bring somebody in with no clue of, of what it takes to be successful in this league. And get it and make sure that guy has some kind of NCAA Division I experience. Some connection. Maybe he was a coach. Maybe he's been in the USHL as an assistant coach. That would be a good trick. That's worked out very well for the Wendigo this year. It's worked out fairly well with Philadelphia. Maybe getting a guy with USHL experience can help you. Skinner's doing an amazing job in Minnesota with that situation. What's the common denominator between Skinner and Halita? Both guys came from the USHL. Both guys are doing a good job. You got a brand new team. Don't make the mistake that Brian Erickson made coming into the East Division. He thought he knew it all. You don't want that guy. You want some guy that's humble, that knows what it takes to be successful in this league. Here's someone you should grab. This will piss everybody off in El Paso. Go steal Joe Coombs. He cannot be happy with what's happening in El Paso. He would be a guy that might consider coming back to the Northeast. He knows how to be successful there. You're a good owner. You have a good situation there. Maybe Coombs can be coaxed back to the East Division. He would dominate it with the good owner. He's done it before. Those are the kind of guys you need, guys that know how to be successful. Rochester. Look it. Barry Soskins tried this trick before. Remember the whole Albert Lee Thunder situation? You can't do that, Chris Collins. You can't tell kids I'll get you tendered if you sign with my group, if you play with my group. That's just not going to work. That doesn't work in this league. It doesn't work in the USHL. It doesn't work in Canadian Junior A hockey. That stuff just doesn't work. And we've had reports this week. That's been the offer. That's not a good sign. Stop that. Or get out of the – if you want to be an advisor or run a sports group or whatever the heck you're doing, don't do that and be directly associated with any particular team. That doesn't work. All right, folks. We're going to be right on time. Please leave your questions and comments in the discussion group on Facebook. If you're not in that group, consider joining our close group of 8,000 friends. All right, that's it for today. We hope that you enjoy your morning coffee and